Welcome to this presentation about machine learning workflows to create pseudo 3D cubes from 2D size pick. My name is Paul de Groot and my co-author is Arno Huck. I will start with the model that we are using, which is a UNET autoencoder. And then I will guide you through a number of workflows uh, for interpolating uh, missing traces. In each experiment, the problem becomes bigger for the machine learning model ultimately culminating in uh, creating pseudo 3D cubes in two different workflows. I will wrap it up with some conclusions. The model we are using is a UNET autoencoder and that is a model that can be used for transforming a seismic image or a 3D cubelet into another image, another cubelet of similar size. We can use this model for classification type of exercises, but also for regression type of exercises, as we are doing with interpolations. UNET autoencoders uh, transform the input to an output of similar size. They can be used for segmentation and regression. And if the model becomes bigger, it means we also have to uh, give it more training examples to train. It also takes up more uh, GPU uh, memory, so we need more compute uh, power, and it takes more time to train. That's on the downside. On the positive side is once we have a trained uh, unit, and the bigger this unit is, the faster it is to apply uh, on a data set. Um, and also it will generate then less edge effects where we splice the cubelets or images together. Now let's uh, go through a number of exercises uh, and I will start with uh, interpolating missing traces. Our data set is uh, from Delft, Onshore at Adlands and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to artificially blank a number of uh, traces. We're doing that at random. In this case 33% of the traces are blanked and then we're going to train the unit to reconstruct the image. And this type of exercise, uh, the, these type of uh, missing traces, we, we often see that in, uh, in the US where uh, we have land surveys and uh, people don't allow data to be uh, viewed under their own uh, land. So this is a, a real problem that can be tackled with these uh, units. So here we see uh, some of the uh, input uh, cuplets and the input cuplet in this case uh, is 128 by 128 by 128 samples and the reconstructed image also is 128 by 128 by 128. We extract several thousands of these uh, cubelet pairs to train our 3D unit. Let's look at uh, the result. This is uh, the artificially blanked uh, input and this is how the unit has infilled this. And if we compare that with the original uh, data, so the truth, then we can see that there is hardly any difference. So this is really a near perfect interpolation. Okay. Now we're going to apply this trained model, which has been trained on the dataset in Delft, to a nearby survey in Rotterdam, city next door to Delft. We have these um, V-shape uh, uh, artifacts in the uh, shallow section and that is because this uh, survey was acquired in the city of uh, Delft and not everywhere. The uh, acquisition crew could of course uh, record uh, the data because of the rivers and the harbors and other obstacles. So if we apply the trained model from Delft to this data set, we're doing a pretty good job. It's not uh, perfect, but we have pretty well reconstructed the data in between these uh, V-shaped missing uh, data areas. Now we're taking it one step further again and we're going to apply the same trained model to a completely different data set. Uh, so again, the data set was trained on an onshore data set 
in Delta. Now we're going to apply it to a data set 350 kilometers away, uh, <coughs> a data set offshore the Netherlands called F3. Here we also artificially blank 33% of the traces that we are applying the trained model from Delft to this data set. And you can see in the slider the ground roof versus the interpolation and the blanked traces. And you can see again that we are doing a near perfect uh, job. Only uh, caveat here is that we have to apply uh, an RMS scaling on the traces to get it uh, really uh, correct everywhere. Now another experiment, now we're going to enlarge the gap that we are trying to fill. We have an, in the Delft data set uh, in the city, the historical city center of Delft, an area where uh, the acquisition crew was not able to record, so we have a bad data zone directly under the uh, city center. And what we're going to do is we're going to train a 2D unit, in this case um, images of 128 by 128 samples extracted from the shallow subservice in Delft survey where the data was good and we're going to train or we're going to introduce artificially blanked traces with uh, different gaps and different positions on where this um, gap uh, is positioned and then we're going to train this to the unit to infill the uh, missing data and this is uh, the result and we can see we're doing a quite good job here Now the last experiment that we're going to do is, uh, is super sampling. In this case, we're going to uh, increase uh, the number of traces, double the number of traces. And the way to do that is that we first go to uh, take the original 3D seismic data and we're going to blank every other trace. That means 75% of all the traces will be blanked in this data set. Then we're going to uh, train Again, a 3D unit to, uh, uh, to reconstruct the, uh, the images. And if we then would um, insert blank traces in the original Delft dataset, we are effectively increasing uh, the number of traces. And applying that model to the blank traces would then uh, decrease the bin size from 20 by 20 to 10 by 10. Here we see uh, one of the uh, input cuplets, again 128 by 128, and the target cuplet with the full coverage of the seismic. Again we are uh, training uh, or we are extracting several thousands of 3D cuplet pairs. Uh, from the data sets and then we train this 3D unit. Here we're looking at the, uh, uh, at the result of super sampling and uh, this is the step number one in which we have uh, the truth so we can actually compare how good we are interpolating. This is the data with every second or every other trace blanked and this is how uh, the model interpolated this, uh, this data, so how it reconstructed it. And if we compare that with the original data, you can see that that is near perfect. Okay, that brings me to pseudo 3D. And basically we're doing the same thing here, except at a much wider uh, scale. The idea is that we want to uh, be able to uh, create pseudo 3D volumes from regularly spaced 2D seismic grids. And what we need is that this 2D seismic grid is tying in somewhere into a 3D volume and where we can then use the 3D volume uh, to create examples for the infill uh, exercise. And once we know how to do the infill, we can apply the trained model to the 2D seismic grid. So how do we do that? We're going to artificially blank a lot of traces in this uh, 3D seismic volume to 
create an artificial grid of 2D seismic, uh, which has a line spacing of 1250 by 1250 meters. And our target is to interpolate all the missing traces and get back to a sampling of 25 by 25 meters. So here we see the uh, artificially blanked uh, volume and we now only have seismic life traces every 1250 meters on inlines and cross lines. Then we're doing the same exercise, we're going to extract cuplets of 128 by 128 by 128 and we're trying to infill the seismic there. Um, again, thousands of 3D cuplets are extracted from the uh, the 3D volumes. Um, and of course these, uh, these cuplets are highly overlapping in all directions. Otherwise we couldn't extract so many cuplets. So here we see the result of the prediction of the trained model which has been infilling the seismic traces. And you can see that it, it's not bad, we're doing a pretty good job. But if we look carefully at the um, <coughs> um, at the sea bottom reflection, then we see that it is not perfect. Uh, if we compare this with the real seismic, <coughs> then we see a much smoother um, sea bottom reflection than what we have interpolated. So it, it looks as if we have done a reasonable job where we have more or less flat seismic reflectors, but as soon as it starts to dip, it becomes a bit more problematic. So in order to improve that, we're going to do a second experiment. And in this experiment, we're going to do a flattening of the data first. And, and we do that by creating a horizon cube. A model-driven horizon cube, we've interpreted six horizons, introduced uh, many horizons in between these uh, mapped horizons, and then we use the horizon cube to flatten the seismic data. Again, we are uh, creating a artificially blanked grid of 1250 by 1250 meters, but all the examples are now extracted in the flattened space. So we have on the left a flattened uh, seismic with, uh, with only uh, the artificial 2D uh, grid and we also have the target grid which is also flattened using this horizon cube uh, technology. Here we see again the original uh, data, so this is the target data and this is what the result looks like after flattening and flattening. And if we focus on, for instance, the sea bottom refraction and also the, uh, the main reflectors, we see that we have done a better job after flattening and flattening, albeit that the uh, data is rather smooth. And if we compare that with the direct approach, then we see indeed better continuity of the main reflectors, but also a smoother result than with the direct approach. So let me wrap up and uh, make some conclusions. I've presented a number of interpolation workflows, and these workflows they can be replicated on any data set that has problems in a particular area, but where we also have complete data in other parts of the survey. In these complete areas, we can extract examples by artificially introducing the problems that we have in the other area. We can then train a machine learning model, uh, and that model can then be applied on the area with the real problem to infill the data that was missing or is bad. The two models that I've presented, the one with the missing traces and the super sampling, these models are generic. That means we can apply these models out of the box to datasets with similar problems. 
And that is why we are shipping these models with our open DTAP machine learning solution as part of an expanding library of trained models. The two pseudo 3D workflows I presented um, have shown that you can uh, compute pseudo 3D from regular, t uh, regular 2D grids that tie into a 3D volume so that we can use the 3D volume to create training sets for the infilling. We showed uh, two different approaches. The direct approach that seems to work well in structural settings which are relatively flat. And if we have more structure in the data, <coughs> it seems necessary to first flatten the data using the horizon cube technique uh, and then unflatten the, uh, the data after the uh, machine learning model has been trained on the flattened data. I thank you for your attention and I'm ready for any questions that you may have. Thank you very much.